Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to do a little bit more practice with function templates. So we've been learning a little bit about them in the previous lesson, so make sure you check those out if you haven't. And let's go ahead and dive in with an example just to put everything together that we've learned about templates, as well as a reminder of some of the C++ that we've been learning, because we don't want to forget that as well. So let's go ahead and just write a template function. And something that we might want to do, for instance, is implement something like multiply. So typically when I'm writing some templated function, I usually just start with a basic function and then I'll add the template stuff later. So let's go ahead and do multiply. And we're just going to take two floats, A and B, and multiply them. So I return A times B, and that looks pretty reasonable to me. So let's go ahead and create a standard out here test out our function here. A will be 07.0F. And again, I'm being explicit with the float here. So we match the type here. And maybe something like 5.2F uh, here. And we'll put a little end line here. And let's go ahead and compile and run this. Okay, the math seems to check out. If I could do it quickly in my head, that's 36.4. So it looks good. So let's go ahead and create the template version. Now how we do this again, we'll use the template keyword, the angle brackets, type name, and then T for our parameters. So let's go ahead and replace float here with T so that everything is consistent. And I'll save. And let's go ahead and rerun this and recompile and it checks out. Now again, notice I didn't have to provide the angled brackets here because modern C++ is smart enough to figure out the types from the template argument deduction. But let's go ahead and again be more explicit here. Let's go ahead and just put in float here and have a complete example. And typically when I'm writing my code, I do like to actually put in the angle brackets. Part of it's out of habit here. But what if we start working with other types of objects here that we want to do? So for example, let's go ahead and do uh, a float times an integer here. Okay, so I've got two different types here. Let's go ahead and try to compile this. And it does compile and it does run. And again, it seems to run here. And let's go ahead and just pick something different for our floating point value. And well, let's pick something more strange here. How about 7.22? Again, testing is important here. And it still appears to be, hmm, well, sort of working here. So let's see if that math checks out here. Let's do 7.22 times 5 and indeed 36.1. Okay, so it seems like everything is working fine here. And this seems to be working okay with the basic primitive types. But what if I start bringing in different types like a vector and a matrix? So for those of you who aren't as uh, familiar, let's assume I have something that isn't just a primitive type here. So let's go ahead to our whiteboard here. And let's say if you remember back in your say geometry days where you have some type like this, that's a matrix. And then you're trying to multiply it by something else that will have the same number of rows as the same number of columns. So something like this here. And let me give myself something reasonable to uh, multiply by uh, five and six. So this might be a VEC2 data type. And folks who are coming with the uh, or coming from rather the game programming world or some of my other series on gaming might be familiar with this sort of concept here. But clearly I've got two different data types here and I need to be able to handle the multiplication in some way. And even more important, these structures are starting to grow. They're not just big um, or rather I should say small data types. The matrix here is at least four values. They might be floating point values as well. So they might be floats or doubles or whatever precision that we decide. So the point is we wanna bring in again some of the C++ that we have been learning. So what's the first thing that we can do to make this operation of multiply happen more efficiently? Again, keeping in mind that we're working with larger data types here. And go ahead and give yourself a moment to think about this, what you might do to our template function. And if you thought about this for a moment, well, again, what did we do when we were trying to be efficient before in our C++? And let me go ahead and give us some room here just to keep everything here. Well, we can make these types that we pass in. Well, whatever the type is, we can pass in, if we're not modifying it, by const and by reference. And again, this will be a decision that you have to make. And you'll have to also think about, well, the 
non-cons template version, for instance. But let's go ahead and try this out here. So if I go ahead and recompile, it still runs, still generates the right value. That's pretty cool here. So that's a little bit of an optimization here that we would like to enable in our template functions and not forget about, right? We don't want to make copies all the time. Now, again, if we just have simple types here, floats, integers, these types of things, it probably doesn't matter. All right. Now, the next thing that I also want to pay attention to is that we do have different types here. And we're not always going to be fortunate enough if we have sort of this multiplication operator, for instance, have the compiler just do a conversion for us and figure out that, yes, this integer types this float should return some float, and it sort of knows how to handle that. But it might not understand in particular how to handle a conversion of a matrix to some vec t uh, or vec2 here, because those are two distinct types. You'd have to write the operator overloads and so on to handle this actual multiplication. So what we need to do here is extend our template here and actually have type 1 and type 2 here. Okay, so let's go ahead and modify our function here. And, well, in this case, let's go ahead and put in an uh, integer here. So we're being sort of explicit about what the two things are that we multiply. And let me go ahead and try to give this a compile, and let's just see what happens here. In fact, let me go ahead and uh, prepare a little bit here. <laughs> and let's see what happens here. Because, well, you're going to notice um, if I try to run this, well, the first thing is I've left T here as the return type. So my question is, what do we return here? Is it T1? Is it T2? Which one sort of takes precedence in this example? Well, there's two ways that we can actually handle this situation, or at least three. We could add another template argument here and say the uh, return type and sort of specify it in that way. But that is putting a lot of burden on the users and maybe making this a clunky API. So maybe let's avoid that for now. Um, now we could also have some sort of default or something maybe. Uh, but what we really want to do here is take the type, whatever the result would be of A times B. Okay, so now typically, if I were to actually do this matrix multiplication here, and again, this isn't a lesson in matrix multiplication, but I would take this row and take the dot product of this column. So one times five. So one times five plus two times six. And that'll get me the thing that's in the uh, first row in the first column here. And then I would do the next row here, three times five, three times five plus four times six. And that gives me the thing in the second row and the second column. I promise this isn't a linear algebra example, but my point is that the result here is that I get some other, uh, I guess, either a matrix type that would be one by two or just another vec two in this particular instance. OK, it's matching uh, what I have here. So we'd need some way to determine that uh, result here. So one thing that we can do in modern C++ is just use auto here and it'll figure it out for us. So let's go ahead and see if I try to compile now what I get. And in this way, it, it works, which is really nice. And we get our result here. And now we can have multiple types here. The compiler will automatically deduce the type for us. Now, another way that we can resolve this, say if you're not able to use, I believe, C++14 or beyond, is you can have a trailing return type here, where you put the return type after. And there's this neat thing here called decal type here, which would take the result of uh, A times b here so whatever our operator is for the multiplication and figure out what the type is so let's go ahead and just try to recompile this um oops what am i still missing here well if i get out of the way so you can see well we still need our uh return type here so i still need to have auto here and the point here of this decal type or this trailing return type is Let's say we have a bunch of parameters here, or rather in our function here, since that's what we're deducing from A and B. And maybe the results only dependent on two specific ones or something. So I'm just being very explicit what the trailing return type is here. So let me go ahead and recompile this. I'll give it a rerun. And again, we can see that this still works here. So it's kind of neat to think about some of the stuff that we have learned in the C++ series and put it together. 
first and foremost const, so this isn't a changing value. And usually when we're passing in some parameter, we can do it by reference if we know that's not going to change, so we can avoid some copies. So again, if we're doing more expensive operations than just integers and floats and things like matrices and vectors or maybe other data types that you might be multiplying, we can save ourselves from copies. And the second is this auto keyword becoming particularly important in helping us to deduce what the types is. So we do want to think about and not always just say, hey, this is going to be a type T, but let's let the compiler do a little bit of work and just do auto here. And then again, we can be a little bit more specific with decal type, which will resolve this here, whatever the result of this expression is, A times B, or whatever rules we want here, and use this as the trailing return type and deduce the type for us. So folks, with that said, I hope this was an interesting uh, review or an exercise just to show you that there's a little bit more to think about with uh, templates here. And it's cool to put this together with the other C++ knowledge that we have uh, learned so far in this series so that you can, again, write some really clean code and that does the right thing for you in a performant way. Because, well, that's why you're using C++, isn't it? All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I'll see you in another lesson. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those future lessons and leave a comment below if you have more questions on this episode. We'll see you uh, in the next one.